Hey, welcome into another Mystery Fifth Hour presented by McCurry Van and Car Rental, the local rental company you can depend on. All kinds of vehicles to choose from, too. Trucks, SUVs, passenger vans, easy in, easy out, easy to rent. Muscle Shoals, Athens, Huntsville, Coleman. They're on 2nd Avenue Northwest and Skyland Boulevard in Tuscaloosa, 256-559-1003. That's 256-559-1003 or McCurryRentals.com. He is Jim Dunaway. He is Lance Taylor. I'm Ryan Brown, rock star in the little box on the screen left. They delivered us to and from Dallas for Correct. SEC Media Days. Correct. Very large van. Yeah. Very large van. They got those big Sprinter vans. So uh, anything you need right there at McCurry Van and Car Rentals. Um, it was a, I would call it a sad note. I don't know where you guys, the, the three of you, are on the spectrum of how much you like Aerosmith. Um, I'll just go around the room. Aerosmith? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's, it kind of leads us to this conversation. I like them a lot. Oh, really? Never seen them. Okay. Yeah. Back to that in a moment. I like them a lot. And um, especially their uh, power ballads, man. Uh, they could, uh, what was that, in the early, from the late 80s, early 90s? They could rock a love uh, song. Don't want to. In a music video, they had a few of Alicia Silverstone. Yeah, Crazy. Yeah. And, uh Ooh. Don't want to miss a thing. Don't want to miss a thing, I think, is what you're talking about. Yeah, man. With uh, Liv Tyler and uh, Ben Affleck, right? Is that that Armageddon? Armageddon? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I love their power ballads. Rockstar? Uh, Big fan, uh, but never never seen them. So, when you start talking about greatest American rock group or musical group or whatever, they're right there in the discussion. Yeah, because some of the greats are not from America, right? You go Rolling Stones and some of the others. And yeah. So when you go great American rock band, Aerosmith oftentimes at one point in history was the one that was thrown out, right? Yeah, so if you miss the story, Steven Tyler, obviously their legendary lead singer, has lo- long since lost his voice. I say long since. It's, it's I guess, relatively new lost his voice they have been on a sabbatical touring but they finally just announced steven ain't getting his voice back so we're done and it is a sad announcement when it's that great of a group but it made us think musical group that you're happy you took the time to go see or that you regret not seeing um you just mentioned you never saw aerosmith and it sounded like you might have regretted that well so i didn't realize that they had retired until i was having uh, drinks with one of our clients and guy from chicago and I was telling him the story about taking Jack to Metallica this past weekend. Right. Or the reason I was taking him, and we ended up, he ended up being at the concert too, and we ended up meeting up at the concert. But I was like, I just, you know, Jack's been asking me about taking him to a Metallica show, and I don't know when they're going to shut it down. You know, these guys are in their 60s at any minute. I was like, you know, I, I've still got, there's a couple of bands I want to see, and one of those is Aerosmith. And he's like, well, too late. They yeah. retired today or yesterday. And I'm like, you, you got to be kidding me, right? And so at that moment, I knew we are going to Chicago. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So that was when it locked yeah. it down. Yeah, because you had seen Metallica with Jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've yeah, seen Metallica yeah. now three times and fantastic. Yeah, I guess you just never know. But like um, when David Lee Roth left Van Halen, they just filled in and kept going. There's no way you could do that to Steven Tyler, though, right? No. No, he's a he's a front man through. Well, I Sammy mean, Hagar did okay. I yeah, mean, they, I mean they still have hits. And uh, Journey and then, went out and found a Filipino guy that could sing like. Yeah, but Steve you still Perry. had the Van Halens in Van Halen. That is true. Yeah, yeah. Brian Johnson did okay when Bon Scott died for ACDC. So is that one of those deals though, where Steven Tyler is like, even if you guys want to do that, I want you to remember how much of this band I own. I mean, I assume oh, he would not allow it. Yeah, yeah. There's I assume no he and way. Keith Richards probably have somewhat of a. You mean equal ownership? Not Keith Richards, Joe. Joe oh, excuse me, Joe. Yeah, Why Joe did I say Keith Joe Richards? Talking about the Rolling they, Stones. They were so hard to get along with. Like they, yeah, they were obviously didn't speak to each other. Yeah. So he and Joe Perry probably have somewhat of an equal Correct. ownership there. And Stephen's like, no, you are not doing this. I still own this band. Um, so you just don't go tour. Um, do you regret not seeing them, Rockstar? I do. There's like there's bands that I regret. I wish I would have seen Rage Against the Machine. Scott uh, said the same thing, so let's start with you. So, Rage wow. Against the Machine, you never, you never took the opportunity. No, they were here at, I think they were at Sloss Furnace with. Uh, this is back when I was in high school, and I sure as hell wasn't gonna be on that pit. Hell no! If I, if I was in a safe <laughs> distance, I would have loved to see because the energy they brought to a show is just so incredible. Um, I'm glad I saw Rolling Stones, even though I was think I was 11 or 12 at the time, and it was the biggest panic attack of my life. And I'm glad I've seen Tool a few times. Um, I'm trying to think of 
Metallica. That's funny that you both said, you and Scott both said Rage Against the Machine, and it was the same concert that you both passed on, obviously. Because it was so different. The energy level, like just how passionate they were and how that uh, how original that sound was. There's been no other band like Rage Against the Machine. I'm sad I never got to see Soundgarden. I don't. I never really cared about seeing Nirvana. Yeah. Did, did you not want to see Metallica? Not now. I wish I saw them in the Black Tour. Well, I the just Black as, Tour was awesome, yeah. but I, I mean, I'm oh, telling you, they, they, still got they haven't lost anything. I know they have, but it's still like... But I liked them at their best with Jason Newstead. Yes, that's what I loved. I don't. Yeah. I'm not a big Trujillo fan. I don't like the crawling around yeah. in the basketball jersey. He's, he's a strange dude. He's really, really good though. Really oh, of talented. Of course, he can't be in that band if you're not yeah. good. But just like I'm, I miss the Newstead days. And I just wish, you know, if Cliff Burton never dies, do they ever have any kind of change? One of them, the way they were consuming, one of them would have died. Consuming. I think Cliff was just a kind of a uh, like they were really bad back then. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean I they were called the Alcoholica, act. but but the bus they, accident, I get it, but like I'm saying, like they're because Hetfield has been in rehab many, many, many times, and a lot of it's because of Cliff's death. Well, think about Dave Mustaine for them to boot him out yeah. of the band because he partied too, too much. Yeah, yeah, I see these. I don't. It got up in my algorithm for a while, but these uh, TikToks of backstage Metallica right before they take the stage. And he's just back there smoking a big old stogie. I mean, the biggest, That's, fattest stogie. Just he just propped up and just smoking that stogie. Crowd's going crazy. They, they don't even know he's back there. And uh, just smoking a cigar before he goes on. I, he was yeah, smoking that, one on stage this past week. Was weekend. he really? Yeah. Yeah. Probably, I mean, in a lot of ways, probably helps his his style of voice. Yeah, to get that voice exactly where that, he yeah, wants that it. Yeah, deeper voice. Yeah. Who do you regret? So, brother saw Queen, wanted me to go with him, and I didn't. I wish I would been a big Queen. fan. Yeah. Uh, Aerosmith, obviously. One that I did get before he shut it down was Elton John. And that was really important to me. And my ex-wife, Bethany, took me for my birthday to see an intimate show at Caesars Palace. And it, he, was, he was awesome. Yeah, I'm torn on Elton John because I would say that is kind of – I kind of regret that. Now, I don't know how often he came around here. I remember one time he was scheduled in Birmingham. Yeah, and I, I had asked, tickets to that. I broke the news to you. I was yeah. like, oh, Lance, I hate that Elton John concert got canceled. And I was like, What? I was like, you thought I was screwing with you. Yeah. Like, no, 100%. It's, they just announced. I know for these guys it's got to be a grind, but I have a feeling that was kind of a diva move move because he had just played Montgomery, I think, the night before and canceled the concert day of. Jeez, I mean, that's just a short drive up I-65. But when was it, give me year-wise, Rockstar, when he kind of lost his, started to lose his register? Elton John? Yeah. I would say nah. The thing I remember the most is Candle in the Wind for Princess Die. That was 97. You could kind of like, man, he's really low. Yeah. I mean, he can't do Benny and the Jets like he used to. He can't, I mean, he can't do. And Lance's favorite, Crocodile Rock, just doesn't sound the same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, imagine if you could go to the Troubadour and see him when he first got on scene. Or Dodger Stadium. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, he, you talk about energy in a show. I mean, he, he put it on back in the day. Yeah. I mean, I would have liked to have seen vintage Elton John. Yeah. I, I, would, yeah. I do regret missing that. But I, that's what I'm saying. I don't know when vintage was. So I guess late 80s, early 90s, you could have still gotten him where you could sing everything you've yeah, written. Yeah. I, see, never got I, to, I, I never got to see him. Yeah. I would say that I regret not getting to see Led Zeppelin, but they shut it down when I was like in second grade. Yeah, you weren't going to know. Yeah. Now, my mom did go see Zeppelin because they played here in 77. Oh, yeah? yeah. Bowel? Uh, no, BJCC. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I did not see Zeppelin either. Um, I, I got to see Rolling Stones at Legion Field and... I can't remember if I saw two stones and one U2 or two U2 and one Rolling Stones at Legion Field. Um, but I'm glad I got to see both of those. They were iconic or are still iconic bands. Uh, well past their prime, though. I don't think U2 will ever be where they were when I saw them. I was never a massive fan. Yeah. Um, Have you too? Yeah, and I saw them. And I, do you guys count if I saw them at the Super Bowl? They were there. They were I there. mean, yeah, you saw them sing. Yeah, I mean, they they played three or four songs. Now, I Weren't did. Weren't you at the concession uh, yeah, stand? I did walk out. Yeah. I'll never forget. They were selling Bush Light in the Superdome. Okay. And I went to get me a Bush Light, and I did a uh, halftime hit. Um, Matt Coulter and Scott Griffin were doing one of our Super Bowl promotions. Right. And so I did an update for the Super Bowl from them, and U2 was playing in the background. They're like, you're not watching the U2 show? And I was like, I really don't care. Yeah, so <laughs> I don't think I'm going to count that then. He was at the beer line doing a radio hit. I, I got to see him for a second. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I don't think that one counts. Um, the, the ones I, I hate the most that I missed, though, um, the Eagles' original members, I never got to see them, but just as a kid growing up, they just had so many hits. And I, I'm not a big fan of them now, but still, just some of their songs will come on and I, I will sing along. But 
Um, Guns and Roses back before the, the voice changed with Axel. I never got to see them, but there was that one moment in time in the 80s, early 90s, that they were just on fire. I, yeah. I would have loved I got, to have I, seen I, them. I got to see them a couple of times, and I got to see... You saw part of one. Well, yeah, well, they actually finished. Did and, they really? Yeah, okay. I, I didn't finish well, but <laughs> Appetite for Destruction, I saw them open in 87 for Motley Crue on the Girls, Girls, Girls Tour, and it was incredible. That was one of the best shows I've ever seen because that was Axel in his heyday right before they hit it big. Yeah, and and I I know that nobody on this set really likes him, but Bruce Springsteen. Um, oh, I like him. I wish I could have seen him. It's just those marathon three and a half hour shows. Well, that's that's what I wanted to see. The one that was that replayed on what was it? It was AXS or whatever it was. Yeah, access to AXS TV. Yeah, yeah, which I think Mark Cuban owned for a while. Yeah, uh, used to be on my Direct TV. They would show that concert every now and then, and I had it saved in my DVR forever. And like Rockstar says, it's it's a it's a three hour thing. Yeah. But that concert at Madison Square Garden, he still sort of was good. I don't think he has his voice anymore. That would have been a great show to be at. So sometimes it's it's not just the artist; it's the artist a particular show at a particular oh, yeah, location. Like I'm too, not a yeah. I'm not a Queen fan, but to have been at Live Aid for that short set at Wembley, I'd have been all about that. You know what I mean? That yeah. would have been fantastic. But those three for me. You know, I got to see I got to see Bon Jovi when when they were young. And Did you do good. Slippery When Wet? Were you uh, on the Slippery I, that when Wet? That was Slippery When yeah, Wet. I remember yeah. my brother going to that concert. I wasn't old enough, and he went, and I was jealous. I really liked Slippery When yeah. Wet era Bon. Yeah, Jovi. I never saw Bon Jovi. And I got to see, I got to see Van Halen. Yeah. Um, Did you go to the 1984 show uh, in Birmingham? Yeah. Yep. At BJCC. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 I was there. Absolutely. And that's, and, uh, that's one thing I'm. I stayed for Van Halen that reunion tour they did probably 2018. I got to. Because I played the VIP lounge, I got to see them sound check, and it was like a dream to see Eddie Van Halen, just to see him nonchalantly just finger tapping. And I was like, because suddenly I stayed for a Velvet Revolver show one time because I've never seen Slash. I was like, I got to be able to see Slash. I don't care about seeing Guns N' Roses now because that's not the same. But that's right. being able to see Slash perform live was really cool. Yeah, you know, I got to see, um, I got to see Lover Boy back then, and, and hell yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, they, 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 they were big bands at, at that time, and uh, so I got to see a lot of. A lot of bands that I wanted to see, you know, Kiss a lot. I got to see Kiss a lot. That was the first concert you ever went to. I went to. We were same place, same time. Um, but but there were some iconic bands I just didn't go to. I guess I was working poor or whatever. Um, the old poor working man. Yeah, the old poor working man. I didn't get to make it there and see them. But um, those were the ones I, I if I could go back and turn back time. I think of all of them. I would choose Bruce Springsteen, Madison Square Garden. I think the the one I had a regret that actually turned into I'm glad I took advantage of it and I always regretted not seeing Garth Brooks on tour. I always I grew up a fan of country music. Garth was I was a you know high schooler in the 90s is when Garth was huge. And when he did that stadium tour and they added Birmingham. Yeah. Like I'll never forget I was sitting right here during the show refreshing 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 to get the tickets from Ticketmaster and got four tickets and there a lot of that was it was Garth, and it was the first time I'd ever seen him, number one. Number two, um, you mentioned venue. It was a perfect night. You were at that yeah, show. You remember the there. weather that night was incredible. I didn't refresh anything, though. I just called our friends at ATIX. Uh, well, I was going to try to get them on the front end so I didn't have to hassle ATIX. Yeah. I, I figured they'd have plenty. Um, and then I, uh, the weather was perfect, and it was, just, it was just a great show. I mean, he plays all out. You, who, was it, who were y'all talking about? It was high energy just a second ago. Uh, Rage Against the Machine. Yeah, Rage Against the Machine. Yeah, Garth is high energy. Now I know you may not like his music, but if you go watch one of his I, you shows, know, for, he for, gives for, everything. I'm not a big country music guy, but if I was to see a country music act, I actually saw Brooks and Dunn. Did you? Yeah, but I and I've seen Alabama. I yeah, you went, you used to go to June Jam, didn't you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've, I've yeah, I've seen Alabama multiple times at June Jam. So I guess I've yeah. seen a lot of country music acts. Yeah. Yeah, but, but, I, but I wouldn't mind seeing Garth. No, Garth is high energy. I mean, yeah. he is all over the stage. That show, that stadium show was in the round. So, I mean, he's playing to every part of the stadium and is just constant motion. I mean, never stops. I'd go back to that show in an instant. Any any stadium he's in. You ever you ever have a show that you, you, you end up at and you're like, why am I here? Yeah. I went to see Kenny Rogers one time. <laughs> Lady. The restaurant owner? <laughs> the BJCC. <laughs> Guy has a barbecue chicken. And it was a date, and uh, I was there. I mean, it had to, I mean. Guy, he was playing the BJCC. Did he sell it out? It was in the round. Oh, it was packed. It was yeah. packed. Oh, it was, Kenny Rogers was, it, it was massive. Huge. He was huge then, and I don't know why. I didn't like him, 
I didn't like his songs, but it's like you said. What did I mean, he close with? The Gambler? Uh, probably. <laughs> uh, I think we were gone by then. I was uh, young and on a date. And, yeah, but you're ready yeah. to get somewhere else. <laughs> and she was a smoker, if you know yeah. what I mean. No, I just. Um, uh, this blood is going to my head. I gotta go. <laughs> no, walk, I, 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 I had one around. of those shows. Uh, I went randomly to Minneapolis a few years ago. And like when I go out of town, a lot of times, if nothing's going on on a specific night, I'll just Google to see if there's concerts oh, in me the too, area. Yeah. And we saw that Lizzo was there and she's a Minneapolis native. And we went to this new venue in Minneapolis and Lizzo was playing. It was completely packed out. The venue was awesome. She put on a hell of a show. Oh, yeah. so, so it was good. It, it was yeah. really good. Okay. But I, I was just, I was looking around. I'm like, what am I doing at the Lizzo show? Yeah. But I, I did uh, in Vegas one time. Buddy of mine was tired of losing money at the tables. He's like, hey, I'm, I'm, I, we can get two tickets down the street and dashboard confessionals. You want to go? And I was like, yeah, because that's going to be a lot cheaper than me continuing to lose money right here. <laughs> so, yeah, let's go. And it was a fantastic concert. I remember falling asleep at a John Mayer concert. And I know it sounds absurd. Uh-huh. I get it. It's the oldest man thing. But we were at Oak Mountain Amphitheater under the stars. And, I mean, when he starts doing, you know, like the, your body is a wonderland stuff like that. Yep. I mean, it gets slow, and he does not mind doing. I don't know that he's jam band, but oh, it's, he, he'll do some guitar. That's riffs. Maggie's jam there. Yeah, right? it's blues. Yeah. yeah, if Maggie's got candles lit and John Mayer on, if I ever roll to the house, yeah, you know it's a good time. I got to start <laughs> stretching. Yeah, then she tells you to get out. <laughs> hey, you weren't supposed to be home this early. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to my guy, <laughs> Kenny Rogers was big enough though that if you go watch the We Are the World, um, that he's the documentary. That, yeah. Oh well, but he was one of the ones that like, all right, who do we have to have? Kenny Rogers. Yeah. Now he fell fast though because my ex Bethany was a big fan, and she went to meet him at a Books a Million like right before he passed away, so like three or four years ago here in Birmingham. Really? And he wouldn't take a picture unless you bought a book. <laughs> that's I mean, that's so funny. he has he gone go- from those moments where he was one of the major players on the music scene to you know book signings and photo ops did she buy the book and did he still have his hair she felt i think obligated to that point to buy the book yeah Yeah. and he still had his hair but his face was really jerry jones tight yeah Yeah. is there somebody you're thankful you saw rockstar before we go um, of course i'm thankful i saw the stones i still i've seen tool van halen uh, pearl jam well you know you was gonna that was inevitable i was gonna see them i was gonna make it a life's mission um Where's just, the one place you want to see them? You haven't seen them, though. Is there a venue that you would like to see them in? I don't like the baseball stadiums. Yeah. So, like they're, that's what they're so big now. They're doing Wrigley again in a few weeks. They're going to do Fenway again. It's just too big. I mean, like, I'd love to see them. Oak Mountain was great. So um, you would just as soon, like... You say it, too big, but baseball park's smaller than... than like, football. Just the way it just, it's so not, Soldier Field is bigger than Wrigley. Oh, yeah. they've played Soldier Field, too. Like, I just I wouldn't want to see it. I'd rather see it, like, at an amphitheater. But 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 if they were just playing, what's the uh, Iron City downtown? If they were just playing Iron City, be, limited, no I, matter the ticket, you'd rather pay a premium price for a thousand people and them on stage. Oh yeah, but then like I don't want to be squashed. Like if I'm at a place where I'm not getting squashed, but like yeah. cause there's some rabid fans out there that have to be. If it's general admission, to they'll be there. If this concert's on Thursday, they'll be there seven weeks before camping out you blew my mind when i was having a dream scenario for our fifth anniversary party i had some ideas and rockstar was throwing prices at me for bands musical talent if if we want to hear who some of his ideas were who he was asking about matchbox 20 matchbox 20 how how much are they i mean they probably are 300 400 thousand if i'm guessing i was shooting for fifty thousand in that neighborhood yeah who's gonna front that yeah the five dollar charge at the ticket. Dunaway Incorporated. Ten thousand fans. Five yeah. five five dollars a ticket. That's fifty thousand. Where, where are you gonna get the ten thousand fans? I guess. Well, I guess people that don't even know us. Yeah, that's, right. Right. that's right. right. Advertising is marketing for us. It's marketing. That's right. I'm a mark. I'm an ideal guy. But if we had to just get Eddie Vedder, Vedder to come sit here in studio and just play a guitar for an hour with you sitting in here as a gift, how much do you think we'd have to pay? I him? wouldn't want that. That's too uncomfortable. Like, I that would be super awkward. I, I wouldn't question. think he'd do it less for a hundred grand. Yeah. I don't even know if he'd do it for a hundred grand. Uh, no way. Yeah. And like okay. just well, like, that's just. Super well, you know, I'm going to win the lottery someday. I'm just trying to think oh, of what a great that. gift like, would we be. We have the date marked. So you'd yeah. rather have the cash? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's short. Yes. Okay. Write that down. Yes. Rockstar would rather have the cash. <laughs> that's all right. Then Eddie Vedder. I mean, just, just walking. Here he is. Yeah. And, like, Technically, by the way, well, Steve, right there. Steve and I got to text last night. Steve, I, we won. We won. We won sixty-two dollars and fifty cents. Oh, so my, I, I, it's my biggest. Guy, you gotta lot. break up that twelve ways. What is that? <laughs> it's just it's just me and Steve. Is that gross or net? Um, that is. Uh, 
Which one is before grosses, they take taxes grosses, out? Grosses, no. I, I, how much did you spend on the tickets to win $62? Is what uh, I'm asking. We've totally now spent $40. Okay, so you're up 22 bucks. Yeah. You're up 22 bucks. Uh, which is 11 per person. Yeah, so you can buy a sandwich now. <laughs> That's yeah, right. Congrats. Today's pricing. But he asked the question. It's me, his beautiful wife, Patty, and, and Uncle Steve. And he's like... So is everybody in the group okay if we turn our sixty-two dollars and fifty cents into buy more tickets? Absolutely, reinvest. And I was like, keep it rolling, baby. We're on a roll. That's the way they do it. <laughs> never never going to win it if you don't reinvest, Jim. That's, right. That's uh, right. That is the mystery fifth hour. Please give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and set your alerts so you know when we're live. And always follow us on social media at Next Round Live, at Next Round Live on all social media. Thank you to McCurry Van and Car Rental. You can depend on them. All kinds of vehicles to choose from: trucks, SUVs, and passenger vans. Easy to rent, easy in, easy out in Athens, Muscle Shoals, Huntsville, and Coleman on 2nd Avenue Northwest. Also, Skyland Boulevard in Tuscaloosa. Reserve your rental today, 256-559-1003 or mccurryrentals.com. Thank you for joining us for the Mystery Fifth Hour.